Hi there, this is the second video I've posted showing you how to make poinsettia plants out of coffee filters. In this video, I'll show you how I've updated my approach to get a far more realistic effect, like the one you can see here. And if you're coming to this video for the first time, I'll give you a very brief run through of how to make this item from start to finish. I hope you enjoy this. to four fives design just before christmas i posted a video showing you how i'd made a poinsettia out of coffee filters and i was pretty pleased with what i'd done certainly the decor items that i had um, used over christmas have really lasted well however once we got nearer to christmas and i was able to see real poinsettias in the shops that we have in the uk I realised that they were far from being realistic, so I bought a real plant, took patterns of the leaves and have developed a new way of assembling those to make something that looks even more realistic. So here is my first attempt. As you can see the leaves are not uniform, they're far more wiggly, but they produce something that's a lot more realistic. And having done the first one, I've tried to do different colours. This one here is actually a pink with orange tints poinsettia, but I really, really like that. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you the pattern that I used and I will show that as a still photo within the video so you can use that if you wish and I'll show you the difference in how I assembled the leaves and the petals to make these even more realistic poinsettia. So the first thing I did was make sure that I got the pattern correct and I used the actual leaves and petals of the poinsettia to make myself some patterns to work from. In all, I had five different sizes of leaves, one, two, three, four, five, and two different shapes of, sorry, one, two, three, four, five different sizes of petals and two different styles of leaves. I think officially they're all bracts, but I'm calling them petals and leaves for the sake of this video. I then made sure that I had got a big supply of leaves and petals to work with. I've got my floristry tape. And what I tend to do with my floristry tape is, is to cut it in half find it easier to work with a thinner strip and I then chose the petals that I was going to work with and here I decided not to use the biggest one so I use the next size down I've got five of those I've got four of the smaller leaves and then I'm going to use three of the little tiny leaves for the centre. For this particular one, I'm not going to use the next to smallest petal. If I keep calling them leaves, I do apologise. So the first thing that's different, apart from the pattern of the petals themselves, First thing that's different that I'm going to do is to make the leaves wiggly of the petals wiggly as you can see here. So 
So all I'll do for that is, because you've got the wire in the center, you can bend it. So I'll bend it first of all, like that. Bend the tip down and then scrunch up the edges. Apart from noticing the different shape um, petals on the poinsettias, the real ones, I noticed how wiggly they were. So you've then got a more realistic petal to work with. So I don't need that one for now. What I do need is to think about how I'm going to assemble these. And normally before I start that wiggly process, what I would do is to lay out my petals, first of all, so I've got an idea of how many of each sized petal I'm going to use. In all, you generally want three layers of petals, starting with the smallest and ending at the biggest. So, first of all, I'm going to take the three smallest sized petals and I want to make sure I've got the nice shiny side at the top. Oh, forgotten, forgotten the first step. Make yourself um, the little central beaded stem using some glass beads on some wire twisted together. That forms your centre and you start off by placing that in the middle of your smallest leaves. So I'm going to use a, a piece of floristry tape. Decide which is the sticky tape by pressing it with your finger. If it sticks to your finger, that's the sticky side. And hold those beads and that central initial row together using your stem tape. Don't need to do it all the way to the bottom. Position those how you like, so you've got that central bit. Now the next thing, we need to add the next layer, and this is where, um, having looked up the real flower, I made a difference in how I assemble them. Because, if you can see on this one here, a real poinsettia has more gaps between each layers than I did on my original first attempt. So I'm going to position the next layer a little bit further down underneath that initial row. And I'm going to start and bind on each petal in turn to make sure that it is securely added. Once you've got going with this stem, stem tape, you're fine. That's the first one. So on this row we had three petals for that central element. For this row I'm having four. Here's my final one. And I'm going to take that stem tape down to the bottom so it's all nice and neat and secure. So we've now got two rows with a slight little gap in between each. For the last row on this particular poinsettia I'm going to use five of the slightly larger leaves, not the very big leaves, petals, sorry, um, but the slightly larger ones. And again, 
I'm going to leave a little gap between the row we've just done and this new row. If you can see that there, I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap. And again, using stem tape, sticky side down. I'm going to bind each of these petals. I got it right that time. I don't know why I keep calling them leaves. There's my next one going on. And you do have to bend the wire as well to get it in the exact position that you need. It might look fiddly, and it is a little bit. I'm not by. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine. And I've just dropped one on the floor. Get that one. I'll carry on. If you're looking for a professional quality, well edited video, this is not the one for you. This is very much mum's video, amateurish, but I hope that you can see that what you get if you follow my instructions is something that looks rather like a realistic insatia. I'm going to move that stem tape right to the bottom. And this is where you will just fiddle about with the arrangement of each of these petals till you get them looking how you like. It is actually relatively easy to do. And all we need to do now is to add on the leaves. And for this, because I've already got a few wire stems there, I'm going to use the full width of stem tape for these. And similar to the leaves, I've also bent these leaves into shape. I'm going to probably start with four leaves. I've got two of that pattern and two of that pattern. Bend them so they're almost 90 degrees to the stem and then fix them on with stem tape like you did with the petals. But having looked at them I'm going to put them a lot further down than I did with my first attempt. leaving a gap. I've got a gap of about an inch, I would say, from the last row of petals to this first row of leaves. But these I'm putting all on at the same level, as though it was a, another row of petals. continue with the stem tape all the way to the bottom covering up all those wires and making it nice and neat but also sturdy. It depends now on what you're going to use this for. If you're going to make a imitation plant of this 
you may want to add another row of leaves and I did that in my previous video but can you see now how those layers are separated with a little gap that's far more realistic far more like the poinsettia whereas before I sort of squashed them all up the petals and then just a tiny gap before the leaves so that is the new style poinsettia ready for next Christmas or ready for the summer and a blaze of poinsettia glory if you are interested in seeing how I made the individual petals and leaves from coffee filters then hang on because I'll put a quick description of how I did that at the end of this video otherwise you can watch my previous video for a bit more of a, a lengthy description of how I did it otherwise I hope that was useful keep on watching before I assemble the poinsettia flowers I make sure I've got a good supply of leaves and petals to choose from so that I can be creative and make different sorts of flowers so I'm going to give you a very whistle-stop tour of how I make that um, those petals and leaves obviously you start off with your coffee filters and there's two methods of colouring them either you can colour them in advance like I've done here with this pink and green and for that you add a little bit of the colouring to a bowl of warm water make sure that the colour is well dispersed into the water then dunk your coffee filters in tap them dry a little bit or squeeze them dry pop them on a baking sheet and dry them in the oven the colour that I'm using are these Wilton icing colours I started off with this box of eight colours and that pretty much does everything you would need there's the yellows, pinks, reds, etc. in there. In addition to that, for these poinsettia, I have bought their Christmas red. And I'll show you what colour that is in a moment. So the other method of dyeing the coffee filters is to cut out your pattern first. And for these poinsettias, I cut out five different sizes of leaf, of petal, sorry, and two different shapes of leaves. This is based on what a natural poinsettia looks like. You won't use all five necessarily in one flower, but it gives you a good base to choose from. And you'll need two petals, two pieces of, pep of coffee filter, for one petal and two pieces of coffee filter for each leaf. So once you've cut them out, take a little bit of your dye, in this case I've used that Christmas red with a little bit of water and then all you need to do, once you've added your water, is to use that icing colour as paint. And look what a gorgeous colour that is. Do that for as many of the petals and leaves as you think you're going to need. It doesn't hurt to have a good supply. I've just done a few here. I've added a little bit of black to these because one thing I noticed with the real poinsettias is how dark some of the leaves were and in particular they had a dark rim around the edges. So once I'd painted these with that Christmas red with a little bit of black added, I went back and added black just round the edge. However you want to do this, whatever colours you want to use, make sure you've got a good supply of dyed coffee filter, poinsettia, petals and leaves to go with. And once they are dry, all you need to do is to pop some glue on one of the leaves. Add one of these. Um, so I use um, floristry stub wires. It depends on the size of your leaf or size of petal 
the thickness of the stub wire that you use. So for example, for these little tiny leaves, I use this wire that's actually used for cake decorating flowers. Anyway, you use some glue, add your stub wire, pop the top on, and then glue that down, making sure that that surface is covered in glue. You will then end up with a range of virtually completed petals that look like this. Peel them off your baking sheet and if necessary, can you see how that's got a bit of glue around the edge? If necessary, trim those off so that you're then left with a perfect perfect poinsettia to work with. I make sure I have a little stock. I usually have a lot more than that to be honest. And here I've got two different colours already prepared. These are the pink dye from that Wilton set with a little bit of red and yellow mixed together to make orange just to give it a little bit more of a definition. This is my Christmas red with the black added to it. And these here are purely Christmas red with no definition added, no other colour added to them at all. And the final thing that you'll need is some beads to make the centre of your poinsettia. So here I've got some little tiny glass beads. You can get these most places. Of course, our friends at Amazon will no doubt supply them if you need to. And I use a little bit of wire on a roll. And I tend to thread four beads on one, three on another, and then fasten those two together to make the central collection of beads for the poinsettia. So get yourself a production line going, get lots of leaves and petals cut out, get them dyed, glue them together with the wire in between and get a big pile of lovely leaves and petals ready to assemble into a poinsettia. So here's the finished article. Um, I've just added the individual flower heads to a longer stem to make this plant and pop them in a planter with some dry foam and that to me looks very realistic and a lovely decor item to add to your home. Keep watching and in my next video I'm going to show you how to make um, lilies out of copy filter. Um, the right here is my first attempt at a small lily. Um, learned a lot from that. And here is my second attempt at a pink version of the lily. And I've just completed this three flower headed white lily. These are my favourite flowers and the beauty of this, of course, is that it doesn't drop its pollen and you don't get that staining that you can from lily pollen. But that is made from coffee filters, a little bit of food colouring, some pipe cleaners and some forestry supplies. And believe it or not, a mystery ingredient of salt and pepper. So keep watching, my next video will show you how I made this lily stem out of coffee filters. Keep watching.